Good morning, Merch family. If you would stand with me as we just engage with the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord, we welcome you in this place. Lord, we set our attention on you this morning. We set our attention and our hearts on you this morning, Lord. As we sing, as we pray, as we worship God, may Jesus, may you be glorified in this place. May we gauge our success by if you are glorified today, Lord. So Lord, we set our expectation that if nothing else happens, God, that our praise would rise to you today. Lord. That you would hear our hearts, Lord, that you would smell the praise fragrance of our praises today, Jesus. Lord, soften our hearts right now, Lord. Soften our hearts. Open our ears. Open our eyes to see and hear you today, Jesus. To see you rightly, Lord. We welcome you. We welcome you in this place. We welcome you in our spirits and in our hearts and in our souls and in our minds, Jesus. You are welcome here. You have an invitation to invade today, Lord.
watching online, thank you for coming, for making the effort, for setting this, this time aside. We know that it's going to make a difference. And uh, we just want to remind you, this is our first Sunday of the month, and so that looks a little bit different. So instead of the standard format with the sermon, we've got more worship for you, and we're going to do communion too. So that's kind of what you can expect today. Uh, the next song we're going to do is called Anchor, and it's talking about the anchor of our soul and our hope. 
And as I was listening to the set list this week, at the same time that that song came on, I was in Hebrews 6, 19 and 20, and it's exactly what I was talking about. So I just wanted to read that and prepare, prepare your heart for what is this anchor? What is this safety that we have? Now we have this hope as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. It cannot slip and it cannot break down under whoever steps out upon it. We have a hope that reaches farther and enters into the very certainty of the presence within the veil where Jesus has entered in for us in advance, a forerunner having become a high priest forever after the order of the rank of Melchizedek. And I just felt like he wants us to understand, like, he's the sure and steadfast hope. We actually can enter out onto Jesus, who's our forerunner, who's gone in front of us, and he's prepared the way. And so that is what we, we hang on to this morning. your faith rise in this truth. Your name is higher, your name 
Come on, sing it with authority, your name. Cause your name is higher. Your name is greater. Oh, my hope is in you. Your word is unfailing. Your promise unshaking. Sing it again, just the voice is your name is higher, your name is greater. Oh my hope is in you. Cause your word unfailing, your promise unsaved. Oh my hope is in you. Your name that we serve a worthy and mighty God that his word never fails if he's spoken a promise of your life it never fails it may seem like it hasn't come to pass and you're like why why Lord but let me just encourage you his word never fails though heavens may fade away the earth may fade away but his word remains Could not hold you. the veil tore before you. you Silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised. Come on, death could not hold you. Death could not hold you. Silence the boast of sin and The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. Come on, you have, cause you have no rival. You have no equal, now and forever, God, you reign. Cause yours is the
you have no ear. gave an awesome word on fear and something that sometimes we get wrong is we think that the devil is a rival to the Lord he has no rival cancer is no rival for him depression is no rival for the son of the living God he has no rival whatever name you could think of poverty, sickness, he has no rival. So as we edify, as we lift up his name this morning, just let those things go. Submit those things to the one true God. Come on, sing, you have no rival. You have no rival. some praise here.
thank you, Father. I just, I just, I couldn't let this go. It was just in my spirit. I had felt I had to release it. So during the bridge of that song where it talks about that, you know, that the, the veil is torn. I just, I just felt something. Almost like I heard like the, like the, 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 the heart of the Father towards if there's somebody here where they feel that that veil is still there. And maybe you came up through a denomination or a religion that you had to have a mediator to, to talk to God for you or that you couldn't, the Bible says, we can boldly approach the throne. And I even felt, and, and, and I don't want anybody to be under any sort of condemnation with this, but just that, like, you can look at some of the people that are up front that are, that are worshiping and, and can enter into that worship, and you're almost jealous of them. Yeah. And I just felt like the, the Holy Spirit was saying, is like, that veil is torn. We don't have to... We, we, don't, we don't have to. We can jump in. You can jump into the river. You can come up front. You can worship. And that it, it, if you're not feeling that, the, you know, like um, Bridget just talked about, like the Holy Spirit goosebumps. If you're not feeling the presence of God, that, that, that there, there's something to push through to come in and, and, and experience the worship. And I just, I know, I just, Father, we just, we just pray right now. And, and I don't know if we want to do that bridge again. Um, just Father, we just, Holy Spirit, just we just invite you in right now and we know that you are here to touch every one of us. Yeah. And Father, it's not about a feeling, it's not about, it's not about those Holy Spirit goosebumps. We know that's a manifestation of your presence and your love for us. And Father, right now we just pray anybody that, that needs that touch from God, Father, that they can have it. They can set aside any of the any of the, the, the wrong ideas of God or how they can how they can talk to him or feel him. And we just say, Father, we just boldly approach your throne right now. Yes. That throne of grace. Yes. Yes, Jesus. We thank you for that right now. We thank you for that touch of heaven, Jesus. Yes. We're going to sing that again. But kids, at this time, you can be dismissed if you would. Have a great time today. Could not hold you, the veil tore before you, silence the boast of sin and grief. Oh, death, oh, death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, silence the boast of sin and grief. Death could not hold come into the realization of our access to you, Jesus. Like Jack preached a couple Sundays ago, Lord, may we picture you in this room because you are. Free us of our need for dignity 
in the eyes of others, Lord. Free our hearts to worship you. Free our hearts to pursue you this morning.
vision of Jesus just walking through here with his winnowing, it says winnowing fan, Matthew 3, and I had to look at the scripture. It says, his winnowing fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And I was chewing on this and I just, I just saw like dry straw just catching on fire as he was moving his winnowing fan. And I feel like it's a couple of things. In Hebrews, it says that the spirit of God, it, it, it divides even between soul and spirit. And I feel like the Lord is here today and he's moving on hearts and he wants to separate the things that, that we don't need to keep around in our life anymore. And he just wants to burn them up so that we can keep the, the good things, right? And so I just want to encourage and exhort you this morning just to give your heart to the Lord and just let him do that work on you and let him show you those things that he just wants to burn up because he's doing it. He's doing a work right now in your hearts. He's here with his winnowing fan. <laughs> he's doing it. Yeah. For you, so I wait. looking for people this morning, right? 
right now in this room. He's looking for people who will humble themselves under his authority. You know, when we say Jesus is Lord, it doesn't just mean that he's in charge of some areas of our life. It means he is in authority. He is our king. He's our ruler. If he says something, we say yes. If he says go, we go. He's our Lord. There's a separating, there's a, there's a line John's going to talk about, but there's a line that's happening where he's separating the goats and the sheep. And it's so funny how often you probably, you guys have probably heard people be called sheep. Don't be a sheep. And I told Kate the other day, I said, we are called to be sheep, just of a different shepherd. We're called to be his sheep. Don't let anybody say, don't be a sheep. We are sheep. Just listen to his voice. So we're going to, you know, we're, we're, we're singing about waiting on the Lord. So often in these services, we want to rush things. But we're just going to sit here for a second. And I want that to, to, to sink in your heart. Just abandon your heart to him today. Call him king and lord of your life and pour out whatever perfume you have. She gave whatever she had. She gave all that she had at his feet. And people thought she was crazy. That's too costly of an offering. That's too costly of a sacrifice. Let's just wait on the Lord this morning.
felt like God was kind of working on me and maybe he wanted me to share about uh, misassigned hunger uh, and specifically dealing with worry. felt like sometimes we're worrying even our worship and prayers to God. We have these cares and things that we're carrying. And we think if God would just fix this worry, if he would just fix it, then my hunger would go away. And I felt like what he wanted me to encourage you with is um, th that we've misassigned the hunger. The hunger is actually to fully give him the worry and, and actually surrender it to him. Not not for us to see it immediately solved, but to surrender it. And so I just want to pray over you um, before John comes up. God, we just, and join me in this if that's you, join me in this, God. We surrender. Yes. We lift our hands up. Yes. We surrender our worries to you, God. We surrender, even when we don't see the answers yet, God, we surrender the worry so that you can satisfy our hearts. For a quick moment, I just want to stay here. is preparing his bridegroom. He's preparing us. Uh, we're going to talk about communion here for uh, just a little bit. Uh, the Lord's put a couple things on our hearts that we want to share, but I want to stay in this in this atmosphere of surrender. Real quick before we transition, um, as I was just worshiping and we're talking about Him being Lord, I just said, Lord, Lord, what would you like from us? You can have. And I just felt his heart saying, I just want my children back. I just want my children back. And so just, just hear that in the depths of your, your heart. That, that's all he wants is you. All he wants is for you to belong to him, to be his. going to do communion in just a moment um, if uh, the ushers if you could walk around and try and catch people that may have not gotten the, uh, the cup so I was praying this week asking the Lord about um, about his table <clears throat> excuse me and uh he told me to read the four accounts. Yeah, let's get back. He told me to read the four accounts of the Last Supper. And um, I've never read them back to back. Usually when I read in, in the scripture, unless he gives me something specific, I'll just read a book and I'll just read it through. But he wanted me to read the four accounts 
and he said, look for what's different. So I got to the book of John and there was a glaring difference. Uh, John doesn't talk about the bread and the wine, actually. Uh, I don't think there's actually any mention of it, excepting that he said, the one, or um, I dip the bread in the wine and the one I give it to is the one who will betray me. And he hands it to Judas. And he says to Judas, go and do what you need to do. And that's pretty much the only similarity between the accounts. So I said, okay, God, I, I can see clearly. Hey, Alyssa, could you just bring the high end a little bit down on my mic? That might help. Um, and I felt like the Lord said, um, let's, let's look there. Let's look at that. What is that? So I started uh, reading through uh, chapters 13 and 17, which is essentially the last um, solid block of time that Jesus spends with the disciples before he's crucified and ascends into heaven. Obviously, after he, he's raised, he, he sees them for short times. But those five chapters, um, I guess it's called the Upper Room Discourse. I didn't know that, but um, some of you may have known that. He's basically pouring truth into the disciples. And he's pouring some more intimate things into them. And at the end, he, uh, there's a prayer from him directly to the Father. And there's a lot of stuff in there that um, Heather and I were being stirred about. But we felt there were a couple things specifically we wanted to hit today. And um, as we're speaking, when you get a word that's piercing your spirit, your soul, I want you to go ahead and take the bread and the wine or the grape juice. So just feel free to do that at any point. We're not going to do like a corporate together today. Um, so we're going to start John 15, verse 19. Uh, actually, I'm going to go to 18. If the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. The world would love you as one of its own if you belong to it, but you are no longer part of the world. I chose you to come out of the world so it hates you. Uh, I was meditating on that and uh, actually heard it phrased um, in a really cool way that I like this week. Uh, we as Christians should not be for sale. We should not be for sale. We have already been purchased. And it was a great price. It was a great price. It was the greatest price. So we cannot be for sale. We cannot. Another thing this verse says to me is that we are called to look different. And sometimes that's really tough, right? Because we physically live in this world, right? So... We're going to wear clothes and we're going to live in homes and we're going to drive cars to work. But our life should look different than the world. And this is what uh, Ty was talking about, the defining line. I have felt for the last few months in my spirit that the defining line is becoming ever smaller. And there will come a point, please do not take this as correction or condemnation. This is just the word of the Lord this morning. There will come a point where we all have to decide which side of the line we are on. And let me tell you, the word says we are to look different. The world hates us because it hated him first and we find our identity in him. A lot of us uh, will sometimes feel like we don't fit in with this world. Guess what? You're not supposed to. We do not belong 
to this world. We are foreigners on this rock. Jesus, show us how to look different. Show us how to be different to the very core of our being. Um, the next scripture I want to read is John 15, 23 through 26. Anyone who hates me also hates my father. If I hadn't done such miraculous signs among them that no one else could do, they would not be guilty. But as it is, they have seen everything I did, yet they still hate me and my father. This fulfills what is written in their scriptures. They hated me without cause. But I will send you the advocate, the spirit of truth. He will come to you from the Father and will testify all about me. Let me just encourage you today. When you are hated in this world without cause, you are in company with Jesus. Let that encourage you today. Have you ever, have you ever been hated or, um, what's a better word? Uh, simplify it, made fun of or mocked or whatever, rejected without, without cause. Like, I, this isn't me. That, that's not me. But still it comes. Let me encourage you. That is because the world hates you because you belong to Christ. And that is a powerful encouragement this morning. Yeah, I, I just have to tag on. Yep. Just as we read that, I just got hit so hard that that's like a specific word for somebody here. Like you literally have been asking, why do they hate me? Why? Why can't I be? Why can't I fit in? I just want to be normal. And you've been asking that, and this is like this is your answer. Like I just felt so strong, and that you have an advocate. He has sent someone to defend you. You don't have to defend right. yourself. You have an advocate. That's right. The last scripture is in John 17. It's 14 through 16 and 20. My phone, my phone, my phone. There we go. Okay. I have given them your word. This is um, at the end when Jesus is praying to the Father. I have given them your word, and the world hates them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as he read that too, I just, um, a few of you have maybe heard this, but probably not everybody. I. I had this uh, moment with the Lord maybe two years ago, and it just is right in line with this. Um, I wasn't even expecting it, wasn't asking for it, but I just was in this worship service, and I literally couldn't stand up. The Lord's presence was so strong, and I just heard his voice say, my holiness means something. You have it too. Mm -hmm. There's a starkness to my beauty. You have it too. You were meant to stand out. And I didn't even realize that was a question in my heart for so long. It was like, I just try to blend in. Can I just like hide? Can I just be normal? Can I just, and it just is a call of God over my life. And I feel like I'm supposed to pass it on to you today that you were meant to stand out. Mm -hmm. It's freedom. Stop trying to be like everybody else. It's just freedom that he's yeah. given us. And that his holiness, this other thanness, is your calling too. It's who you are. So I don't know, you want to pray? Yeah, um, just a note that I had on this was that um, just be encouraged when you don't feel like you belong to this world because we do not. We are passing through. And I, you know, I know this has been kind of a, um, a theme, if you will, kind of the church at large. A lot of people talking about time is short, time is short, time is short. And I agree with that. Um, and I just wanted to share today that I don't know, like I don't feel specifically in my spirit if like literally the world is ending in a very short time or maybe, maybe, um, or 
if it's the fact that our life is gone in a day. It's gone. So even if this world can survive for hundreds more years, our, our life is a vapor. You know, the word talks about on Judgment Day, the Father is going to judge what we've done. And it will be made of gold, silver, and precious stones, or it will be wood, straw, and hay. And he is going to burn up the wood, straw, and hay. He's going to burn it up, and it will amount to nothing. But the things that we've done that are gold, silver, and precious stones will stand the trial by fire, and we will get rewards for that. So let me encourage you today, don't just sneak into heaven with all of your wood, stubble, and hay. Go before the Father on that day and present what you have done through the motives in your heart. Present to him things that will stand the test of the fire. So let me encourage you today, while you're searching your heart about not belonging to this world and, and understanding why the world hates us, make the decision now to not sell yourself. Make it now so that the things that you're doing with the time we have left is made of gold, silver, and jewels. Do it now. Do not wait. So we were, uh, we're gonna do an altar call this morning and um, I told the team before church, I said, you know, I don't really know specifically what the thing is gonna be, but I know that the Lord always provides direction. His spirit always directs us if we're listening. And um, Tim Duncan came to me just like 30 seconds before that last song was over. He's like, man, I got an altar. I got, I got a thing in my spirit. I got an altar call in my spirit. And so I want Tim to come up and share what that is. Um, I don't know what it is. He hasn't told me yet. Um, <laughs> but, but I know this man loves the Lord and hears from the spirit. So we're going to go wherever you feel like we're supposed to go. out there might be saying, well, how do I do that? How do I become a sheep? How do I get Jesus to be my shepherd? You know, the simplicity of the Bible says when you come to know the truth, the truth will set you free. The freedom in that is salvation. And Jesus, like he said, we've been bought with a price. Jesus paid that price. He died on the cross. He gave his body, he gave his blood, he gave everything for us to be able to come before the throne of grace. And to do that is by confessing. It says in 1 John, to confess your sins before righteousness. And he will be faithful and just to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. He'll cleanse you. Don't be afraid to say you're a sinner. The Bible says we've all sinned. Down your mind that Jesus was born of a virgin, died on the cross, went to hell for three days. Three days, Satan thought he'd won. No, he didn't. Jesus turned around and stood up. When he ascended into heaven, he's making a place for you making a place for you. He's got your place in heaven where you can sit with him and call him your brother.
another day, another minute, another hour ago. Thank him, dear Lord, for your safety. Amen. Here's what we'll do. Um, can I have the leaders uh, come up front that uh, said they'd be available to pray? Um, uh, first, before um, you know, we open up the front here, um, did what Tim say, did that, did that touch something in you? Just because we're all sitting here in a church, you know, I don't want to assume that we're all believers. So I want to give the opportunity right now, every head bowed, every eye closed, please. Tim's words pierced you, there is a reason they pierced you. There is a reason. It is the Holy Spirit calling you. You may not understand everything he was talking about. You may not have all the pieces together, but if you feel it in your heart and you know what he's saying is true, the Lord is calling you this morning and I want you to respond. I just want you to raise your hand, please. So I'm gonna pray with you. Is there anybody here this morning? I'm gonna wait just a moment. Okay, I did not see any hands, however, doesn't mean there weren't any, so I'm going to pray anyway. If we would all just pray this together, it would be very brief, and then we're going to open up the front and do one last song. Father God, everybody with me, please. Father God, I acknowledge today that your son Jesus died on the cross and rose again to give me salvation. I'm a sinner, and I need a Savior. And I'm declaring today that my Savior is Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you made a way for me to be right with you. And from this day forward, I will live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, I did not see any hands, but if somebody did put a hand up and pray that this morning, I would just love to hear about it, share with one of our leaders, pastor, any, I'm sorry, oh, yes, and on live stream as well, absolutely, thank you, thank you. So if, if uh, you're on the live stream and you prayed that prayer for the first time, just put it in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and then now we're also going to open the front. And I, um, I kind of felt like um, it doesn't have to be specific today. If you need prayer for anything, please come forward. But one thing I was feeling was um, about, the th about not being for sale. If you feel like, you know, you've been walking with the Lord, you know, your whole life or however long, doesn't matter. But you feel like you've been selling parts of you. And you're just done with that. You're just done. Like at some point, we come to a place in our life where we're just done. If you're done selling yourself today, I want you to come forward and get prayer this morning. The Lord will, the Lord will heal those places and he'll redeem those places. So uh, we're going to do one last song, and uh, this goes perfect. The last song is holy. Holy means to be set apart. It means to be separate other than. And I believe that's what the Holy Spirit is doing today. He's beginning to set apart his bride. I just have one thing. One thing to add on to that. I feel like what he was saying is like the invitation to go all in. Like there's like a holiness. There's a starkness. There's like a unique differentness, like a separation thing. And so I feel like that's a tag on to that invitation. Like if there's a new depth of like yes that you feel stirring in your heart, I think that's a part of that too. So just come forward for that as well.
going to give just a few more minutes for prayer, and then we're going to kind of wrap up our morning together. So let's just hold steady for just an extra moment. promised us that you, the one who began the good work in us, each of us, you have promised, you've given us your word, you will be faithful to complete that work. And we just thank you that this morning has been part of that completion process. We say to you, Lord, continue to complete us. Continue to work your work in us. Continue to transform us into the image of your son, Jesus. Work your work. May your fire burn. 